Hello and welcome back to Life of Posey. In today's video, I'm so excited to share with you a beautiful wedding dress I was able to make for a pit bull named Luna. Her owners reached out to me about a month or so ago and asked if I would be interested in making a wedding dress for a wedding highlight video they were going to make and put up on YouTube and TikTok. Of course, I couldn't say no to this fun opportunity. So stay tuned to see how I made this wedding dress for sweet little Luna. Don't forget to head over to Luna's YouTube channel, which is called Luna the Pity, to check out this wedding highlight video. You will not want to miss it. Go follow them on Instagram and TikTok at Hey, my name is Luna. Okay, so this isn't the best lighting, but this is an old wedding dress that I am going to put to use. There's even these little arm straps and I'm loving these satin covered buttons. I think that is going to be something I'm going to incorporate into this dress. I probably won't be using any of, any of this because um, the client would like the dress to be more satin. And so if I pull up several of these layers down here, we have a satin layer. And so I'm not really sure what it will be yet, but I am excited to get started. Okay, so I didn't record this part, but this is the pattern that I made after I received Luna's measurements and I added the seam allowance and extra inches for Velcro closures and such. And um, I have a hard time believing that this big old pattern is gonna fit, even though I know it will, but I'm just so used to making really tiny dresses for Little Miss Posy. So um, this is so different for me to make a dress for a large dog and I love it. It's a nice new challenge to make something in a bigger scale. So anyways, let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna start um, taking this dress apart in order to use the fabric. I'm gonna use scissors to be honest to cut a lot of this off. It'll save me a lot of time but I think I might just try to take this lacy bit off using the seam ripper. In various little areas, you can easily see the strings that are keeping it um, attached to the bodice. But I don't mind losing a little bit of fabric if I need to by cutting instead of having to rip every seam out. But there are several layers in this skirt. We have this sort of chiffon layer. We have a very fine tulle layer. We have the satin layer. We have a thicker, bigger tool layer. And so there's quite a bit to work with. There are seams going up the back of each layer of the skirt. And so I'm going to start by cutting down the center of these seams in order to open this dress up and give myself a lot of fabric to work with. Okay, I've cut through the center of all of those layers here in the back. And so now I'm gonna work on removing the zipper and the waistline. Okay, so I am working with this big length of skirt that I took off of the wedding dress and I've rolled it up and put it towards the back so that I have this surface here to work with. And I'm going to work on this little panel and try to make the bodice out of this area. With this area, I'm going to take my pattern, my bodice pattern here and lay it across. And this is so big that it doesn't even fit into my viewfinder very well, but as you can see, the bodice will go this way. The width of this fabric is not 
too wide. It only is leaving me a few extra inches on each side. And what I want to do is try to gather, not gather, I want to try to do some pleating in the middle of the bodice that I think will be a nice little accent. So I'm gonna move this aside. And I'm gonna find the middle of this fabric here by folding it in half. And right here in the center, I'm going to stick a pin. Well, gosh, right there. So that's my halfway point. Let me double check since the pin fell out. Yes. Okay, so as you can see here, I have the center marked out. And so from this point, I'm gonna start making some pleats. And in order to do that, I'm gonna use this cute little fork that I used in a previous video for making pleats. And I tried doing pleats by hand, which is totally doable, but this really helps you to keep the pleats even the same exact size. So this being my center, I wanna do two pleats facing each other here. Put a little clip there and now I'm gonna do one this way need to move that over a little bit I want to have a little bit of an opening here in the middle and I think that looks about right so I'll clip this one into place as well okay looking good This material is quite a bit thicker than a lot of the other materials I've used to make skirts and dresses. So it takes a little bit more work to get it to lay the way you want. But I think that these look pretty even and I like the spacing. So I think I'm gonna be happy with this amount of pleats. I don't think I'm gonna add any more because I actually don't think I'll have enough room to put the whole bodice pattern across here if I put more in, so I'm gonna measure and check. Okay, that's perfect. I can't add any more pleats to the center of this or else I won't have enough room. So I'm really pleased that this worked out so well. So now I'm gonna straighten up my pleats so that they're going straight all the way up. So that means I'm probably gonna need to use a lot of pins. This way I can get the fabric to lay really flat before I cut out the bodice. Okay, here's what I've come up with so far. I ended up fanning them out a little bit up at the neckline, more of a V shape. And I think I'm gonna insert in here a little piece of lace that will go in the center section. But they're not perfect, but I'm not too disappointed with them because it turns out this fabric is pretty hard to work with. <laughs> so I am going to take my pattern and lay it across this bodice and try to center this with the material and with my pleats, keeping this right in the center of this little opening and pin it into place and then cut this whole bodice piece out. Okay, I've traced out the whole pattern. It looks pretty sketchy up here, but I had to try to figure out how to get around those pleats up there. And so now I'm gonna cut it out. Okay, I've cut it out pretty rough like, but I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and sew really close to the edge here to keep these pleats in place and down here at the bottom as well before I cut this off. I don't wanna remove these pins just yet because they're kind of holding things into place. But once I stitch across the very bottom edge here, it'll keep those tacked down. So I'm gonna do that at the top as well and then I'll clean up the cutting lines. 
So now I'm trying to decide if I want to lay lace in this center section here. I have some lace on these sleeves that I could cut out and lay inside of there. But I also have this back portion of the dress that has these beautiful covered buttons that I really love. So I'm thinking about cutting a panel out of this area and laying it in here and seeing what I think. So I think I'm going to do that. Okay, I have this center section out and I'm not going to cut it as narrow as I need it yet. I just kind of want to visualize the effect by folding it under. I'm going to lift up this pin. So this we're placed in here and I would need to cut a little more lace to put in that part. Not sure if I'm sold on that or not. I'm gonna work with it a little more. Okay, I've gone ahead and cut out that panel with the buttons and the bottom portion here was part of the sleeve that had buttons on it so that I could get them to run from the top to almost nearly the bottom. This portion will probably be hidden somewhat anyway, so I'm not bothered with it not going all the way down. But I think that looks pretty good. You know, we could be super picky and say, oh, these buttons aren't perfectly stable, but these raised satin buttons do not lay down perfectly. So I'm going to bring this over to my sewing machine. I'm going to remove these pins here on the side, and I'm going to fold this pleat back and sew right down here underneath so that it won't show on the top. And then this pleat will lay over the top of it, and I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay, I'm now working on adding a hem to the side of the skirt portion. This has already been hemmed because it's the original skirt on the wedding dress. And I'm just kind of blending it in here, which doesn't look super fancy, but I'm going to be adding a lace border. So I think that that will be fine. So I have not found an easy way to hem curves. I'm just not good at it, I guess, but I think a whole bunch of pins does the trick and then I bring it to my sewing machine and hem all the way around the edge of this. So I'm working on the skirt portion so that I can attach it to the bodice. Okay, I've gone ahead and hemmed all the way around the curves on the bottom edge of the skirt and up to the waistline. So this is all ready to go. Well, ready for the next step, but I'm going to set this aside for now and I'm gonna go back to the bodice. I ended up having to go in here and carefully catch both layers of the pleats um, by hand. And that looks really nice. They're totally secure now. They're not gonna come up. So what I'm gonna do now is add the back half of the bodice. So all I'm going to do is take another piece of material, which I cut out using the same exact pattern for the bodice only this time it's a thinner material. It was actually the lining of the wedding dress. So I'm able to use all the material from that dress, which I just love. So we're gonna have the good side of the bodice facing up and we're gonna take the bodice, I mean the lining material and put it good side facing down so that they're sandwiched together. Really, I don't think there's a good or a bad side to this lining, but you do wanna make sure the good side of the front of the bodice is facing upward. And so we're gonna put these together and pin them together in a few places. This material is a little more slippery and slick, so you might wanna use more pins if you're using material like I am, so it doesn't slip on you while you're sewing it together. So once we're all pinned together, we're going to take it to the sewing machine and sew all the way around the bodice, but we are not going to sew the bottom edges together. We're going to leave this portion open. Okay, I'm going to add this really pretty little delicate trim all the way around the edge of the skirt. So I'm going to bring it over to my sewing machine and start up here on this little top side portion of the skirt 
and just attach it to the top. I'm not going to go underneath. I want it on the top because I think that it has a pretty little border. So I'm going to lay it up here and I can pin it into place like so. And then I'm not going to pin the whole thing on. I'm just going to get it started there and then just carefully sew it on as I go down the length of the skirt until it's all the way around. And I think that will be really lovely. All right, I'm back from the machine and I have sewn this pretty little border all the way around the outside of the skirt. And I think that that's just a nice, soft, little delicate touch and I really like it. So I'm pleased with that. I'm working on attaching the skirt to the bodice and Miss Posey had to be involved in this. <laughs> She's laying right on top of the skirt. <laughs> She's in every step of this process. So I am out in the dining room now because I need a bigger table to work on. So the dining room table. I am attaching this really beautiful lace here in order to make a longer train. And I think it'll look really pretty but I need to attach this lace to another piece of fabric that will be hidden underneath the main part of the skirt. And so what I'm going to use is the lining of the original wedding dress here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and remove with the seam ripper this portion of tulle that's still stuck on there from when I removed it. Okay, in order to make this lace train that I'm making long enough to stick out beneath the original layer of the skirt. I am laying this lining material on top of it and I'm going to sew the edge right here and then open it up and it'll give it that extra length. As you can see, I've pinned the fabric together all along the edge here using clips, but you could also use pins. I'm back from the sewing machine and you can see that I've stitched all along that edge. So now I can flip the fabric over and I have one nice long continuous piece of material. Okay, now I'm gonna work on the very edge of this and I'm not gonna hem it, I'm just gonna cut all the way up to this really pretty border here and it won't fray because this has been finished off really well but when i get to the side i'm going to cut it straight across as i have here because i will fold this under twice to give it a nice hemmed line up the side okay i bought these little flowers but i don't really like the kind of rhinestone in the center i rather have it be a pearl so i have these pearls and i'm going to stitch them you can see there's a little hole through it to the center of these flowers. Okay, so I have attached both skirts, both layers of the skirt, the top layer, which you've seen here that I put the pretty little trim on, and also this lacy train, which I attached to this lining, and it goes all the way up. And so I have gathered both of them, attached them to the good side of the bodice. And now I am going to cover it all up as I always do with this back side of the bodice by folding it over once and pinning it in place all the way along the length of the bodice and the skirt. Okay, I've gone ahead and sewn the Velcro closures on all of the straps. And so I've also added this little border to the waistline, which I think is very pretty. It's the same border that's around the skirt. And now I am going to attach these three little flowers that I put the pearls in the center of at the waistline. So I'm just gonna stitch those on by hand. I also decided to add this pretty rose to the neck strap so that when it comes around Luna's neck, it will look pretty from the front. Okay, I'm all done with this dress, and I think it turned out lovely. It turns out that making a dress for a larger size dog is quite a bit of work. <laughs> you need a lot of table space, and 
Even though I enjoyed the challenge, I think I prefer making small dog clothes <laughs> because I can make it in a very short amount of time. But I'll give you a little close up here. Here's the waistline. I think the little flowers turned out lovely with the border here. Posey's squeaking her toy in the background. Here's the bodice where we did the pleating and put the button lace center in. And then we come down into the skirt. And then I added the underlay skirt of this really lovely lacy material, which I absolutely love to give it a longer train. And around the front of the neckline, I went ahead, let me turn this way, and stitched this really pretty rose so that this will be on the front of the dog's neck. It'll have a little accent there. So I think that that turned out really lovely and I'm very pleased with it.